how does this survive? Look at that. You see that? You see that? <laughs> That's a 107 degree tomato. Holy crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tasty. There we go, folks. 100 degrees. 100 degrees. 100.2, it's probably gonna hit 101. Let's see the difference. It's hot out here. Yeah, it's toasty. Oh no, here comes fat dog. <laughs> So explain what you're doing. Who would see a sprinkler and not come play in it? <laughs> well, Especially when it's 10,000 degrees Come, degree come here, here for a minute, look. Look at the rash. Can you see the rash? Turn around, because it's on the back too. So, 100 degrees today, 102 tomorrow, and we're out here cutting grass, as you can hear. So, uh, I'm gonna test out a new little camera I got, so I figured I'd just shoot something. I Yesterday I went and cut the green, Today we're cutting the front. Jess, the good witch is coming over. She's gonna work a little bit on the zinnias. Uh, clean up there, she's gonna work a little bit in the garden. But man, this heat, this heat is brutal. But if you have Bermuda, it loves this heat. <laughs> Bermuda's crazy, man. As long as you got water, it loves the heat. So that's what we'll talk about today. Just uh, grab the camera and shoot what I'm doing. Hold on. It is hot out there already. It's like 10.30, dude. I have to go see the temperature, but it is scorching. So, probably one of my favorite pieces of equipment that's least talked about. I'll put a link to this unit on the webpage in the description below. I'll put a link to this unit where you can get it. But it's my McLean Edger. Nice Honda engine on it. I have a stick edger, I have a weed eater, and both Ryan and I, when we have to do our edging, we constantly pull this out. Now, I'm not edging 25 feet. If I do all these lawns around here, I have 800 linear feet to edge. <laughs> and my shoulder, by the time I get done with that stick edger, is just racked.
Stay. Oh no, here comes Fat Dog. <laughs> All right, so the Good Witch is here. Say hi, Good Witch. Hi. And today she's going to be on garden duty. So she finished up over at the warehouse, and I texted her. I said, Well, come on over here. I got stuff I got to do over here. So let me show you what I need done. Okay, so here's what I want to show you. I talked about this yesterday. So this is a back, usually a bacterial, this is a bacterial disease, and that's what you get on zinnias. So what I'm gonna have her do is, I'm gonna have her go through here, basically strip out all the leaves with that bacterial on it. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna transfer it to the other plants. One of the ways that this transfers or develops is because you wet the leaves, and that's why we always water down at the bottom. So she's gonna come through here and Unfortunately, you'll see it. See how it is in pockets. So I got a pocket here, and then I got a pocket over here. We got to sort of strip out these pockets. So we're going to strip out that disease. I've got some treatment coming for it, but I want to get those out of here. And then let's go over the garden. I'll show you what to do in the garden. Someone asked me yesterday. They said that they thought that she stripped off the lower leaves of the tomatoes, and we're not doing that this year. All we're doing is is we're taking out. Um, any anything that we look like that has any sign of disease on it or we're, we're pulling out so and by the way I did start to tie up high the tomato plants are breaking the eight-foot stakes right now if you go into this congested area and it's usually on the inside we're gonna find this this is what we're gonna find that right there and that's what she'll be pulling out so she'll mainly be going on the inside of these plants and looking for those little spots. Now this is something that we're doing once a week? About, yeah. So once a week we're just coming in here and we're just cleaning them up. But I did see some more, some more stuff in Chiba. Look at those flowers. Those are beautiful. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? Those are just absolutely gorgeous. They're so funny someone in the comments said dude your lawn looks like crap <laughs> so we've done a hard scalp out here we did a sort of a verta cut on the back and we did a core aeration on the front basically took it down to mostly brown uh, this will turn solid fuzzy green in about six days and yes we just did a video about putting down all the treatments and fertilizer So last week I came out here and I fertilized the green with the new Green Shocker product. One of the things we're doing with this is we're doing all kinds of testing on different application rates and what rate gives you what response. And in the fall when, this, when these test bags come out, they're not going to be real bags of fertilizer. They're going to be small test bags. If you guys want to help out, you can test different application rates like 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5 on different types of grass and do, and do sort of strips of it. It's going to be kind of cool. Um, I borrowed barbs until mine. I ordered another one. This new one here I just ordered is really cool, by the way. It actually has a little, one of those little things down at the bottom. A little spinner down the bottom. That's actually pretty cool. So I did weigh this product and it comes out to 1.7 pounds per quart. So it's just under six pounds 
per gallon of this stuff. Again, I'm doing a light stimulated treatment, so that means I'm putting it out at three pounds per thousand. This green is 500 square feet, so I am putting out I am putting out 1.5 pounds. Again, this is the size of salt. And this is one of the few fertilizers that you cool season guys can actually use in the summertime. Why is that? It's because you control when it goes in and it's very mild. You will not, there's no long-term flush of nutrients going down. You put it out, you water it, you're done. You get that green, dark green response from it. So yes, you can use this, even cool season guys, if you have a week where the temperature is going to drop a little bit, you got some rain moving in, this is going to be perfect for that. So I'm just going to feed it again. I don't know what the hell that was that landed on me. I gotta get rid of that. They're gonna eat it. Okay, so let me show you. This is why we love this product. See how small this is? The granules are the size of salt. As soon as you put this down and you water it, it's into your thatch layer. It's not gonna move, number one. Almost zero runoff from rain, because as soon as it gets down there, it stays and it goes right in. You, the problem with runoff is when you have a fertilizer that sits on the ground for weeks and weeks and weeks and you get rain and rain and rain, the soil gets saturated. That's not how this works. So all I'm going to do, let me show you it. I think you can see it right there. The little black tiny specks, that's the green shocker right there. Little black tiny specks right at my finger, that's the green we'll shocker. wet this. Let it sit for about a minute, and then I'll water it again, and those nutrients are in the soil. Holy crap, man, it's hot. So she's pretty much got that whole thing filled up. And it is scorching hot. I mean, we're having to take breaks, what? <laughs> I've been taking them like every 15, 20 minutes just to make sure I don't overheat. <laughs> Dude, look at her. Look at her. She's going to fry anyways. My wife was like, I wear sunscreen. My wife was like, is she tan? <laughs> <laughs> no, she just turns red from the heat. <laughs> so anyways, this is just a long, miserable process out here, but this is when it all takes place. I mean, this is you're going to get in this warm humid weather you're going to start to get this stuff so we got to clean this up and then if she wants she can go do tomatoes or she can come back tomorrow and finish tomatoes <laughs> so explain what you're doing who would see a sprinkler and not come play in it <laughs> well Especially when it's 10, come, come here, here for a minute look look at the rash can you see the rash turn around because it's on the back too Zinnias have hairs. They're pokey. So, she... Zinnias have these hairs on them, like a squash, a cucumber plants, and she's actually having a reaction from them. So she's out here in the sprinkler. I told her to jump in the pool, but she's like, I didn't bring anything to wear. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> got places to go after this. Dude, I have got to try this. So, I just picked this tomato off the vine. It is 101 degrees outside. Let's see. <laughs> how, how does this survive? Look at that. You see that? You see that? <laughs> That's a 107 degree tomato. Holy crap. <laughs> hmm? So here's an example. I'm going to walk you over to the garden. This is one day's harvest right here. That's one day. That's probably about seven pounds right there I pulled yesterday. And there's still more that I could have pulled off there. 
I am getting a little bit of splitting because of the heavy rains that we had, but every single day, that's what I'm pulling out of this garden. Every day. I hear my neighbor sneezing. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of pollen out. So it's the next morning. So a couple of quick tips for this extreme summer heat. Number one, uh, give your lawn a decent amount of water early in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., run your irrigation system. I'm about to run mine now. That'll help it survive this summer heat. Number two, if you have Bermuda, um, I don't, if I have short Bermuda, I really don't see any negative effects from cutting it in the heat. You're best off to cut it, of course, early morning or in the, in the early evening. You can get a white haze. It's like a heat burning haze sometimes. If you have a rotary or riding lawnmower, if you cut in the heat of the day, I have noticed that. So it's always better to cut, again, early early morning or late afternoon when, it, when the temperature goes down. I know people are gonna say, you expose the lawn to more fungus overnight, whatever. Just, you, you gotta make time. So what we have stripped out, sadly, you can see I've stripped out a lot of the zinnia in here, but all that disease needs to go. But I mean, the majority of these are just fine. So I did find a product that I'm gonna test that actually is made for this bacterial type um, infection. But lawn, you know, we're feeding the lawn. Remember, this is a warm season grass. The main staple of your feeding program should be PGF complete. That's what we're putting down. Now we are low on phosphorus, so I am mixing like half and half PGF complete and PGF balance. I am doing that this year. The green, the green's coming along pretty good, but the garden, I just gotta walk over here and show you this because that is pretty crazy. We're almost at the beginning of August and I've only, I'm only seeing one tomato plant that I'm gonna lose. Again, we're not doing much of any kind of pruning. You can see how thick this is. It's crazy. I mean, look at, <laughs> look at those bad boys right there. Is that crazy or what? And this whole place is just loaded. I mean, look how thick this foliage is in here. You would you would think that I'd just be loaded with with fungus, but I'm just just on the interior here. If I go in, this is where I'll start to see it, and that's what I need to go, sort of pull out. But you can see all the wildflowers, and then amongst all these wildflowers, you can see all the tomatoes that are in here. Now, is that gorgeous or what? Look at that, look at all those tomatoes. This, okay, here we go, ready? Here we go, ready, ready, ready? <laughs> so the good witch told me, she said, uh, if you're going away, I'm gonna have to have a step ladder to keep tying these things up. They're gonna get up probably about 12 feet tall. It's just crazy. So, don't forget, keep fertilizing if you're warm season light coats just light coats of pgf complete and people say well what's a light coat just below the bag rate you can put that out you know every three weeks three or four weeks or so just put out a light coat of pgf complete i did a video on improving your soil put things down like human char to improve your soil um, if you want to try the dirt booster try the dirt booster but uh, the main thing is is watch your health man you get out here in these hot days man it can just you'll end up dead so be careful Anyways, guys, hit subscribe. Talk to you later. Dot.